click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends uh, we have seen inheritance topic uh, in last videos now in this particular video we are going to see very important concept that is object class okay so basically uh, we have seen java.lang package so in java.lang package we have one class called as object class don't get confused by the word object okay uh, creating object is a different part and the object class there is a in uh, inbuilt class has been provided by java.lang package so it's uh, different than what the object we uh, concept is all about okay so object class which has been provided uh, is this is a class you know this class is considered as you know top level class of java hierarchy now what do you mean by that any class even if i'm creating a class student let's say this class is directly inheriting a okay object class we are not writing any statement for it it is implicitly inheriting it suppose if i am using some inheritance concept then only my subclass uh, indirectly inherits the object class okay then how actually object class do does it we will see through this particular video so object uh, class as i told you it is being provided by java.lang package and it is known as a parent of every class that is there in build java class whether it is in build java library which is being there or any customized class which we are creating all those are indirectly inheriting directly or indirectly inheriting the object class okay now this particular class uh, which is being there has provided us very good features or very good uh, methods uh, if you want to use it you can directly use them but if you want to give us any customized uh, behavior to it then you have to override it okay so basically uh, object class is being provided by java.lang package and every class uh, in the java is directly or indirectly derived from the object class so that's why it is known as a root of inheritance hierarchy okay so even if i have my own class or whether it is any inbuilt class is all all these classes are having parent most class uh, that is object class now uh, most of the methods of this object class is are abstract okay uh, so basically uh, if you want to use them you have to override it okay uh, so many classes in object class are like which is having uh, if you want to give an implementation for them then you have to override it and you have to write your own customized code for it so let's understand what are the methods object class has given us so methods are uh, the uh, here I have uh, mentioned some few methods which are very important for us to know in this particular slide. So the first important method uh, it has given is the two string method. We will see program of each of them uh, in coming videos and this video. Okay. So the first method is a two string method. Uh, let me explain in short what these are all and in individual videos we are going to see uh, exact uh, way or exact uh, how we can use it through our programs okay so in this video we are just showing uh, we are just seeing the rough idea of each and every method so for the first method it's a two string method the main name itself says that two string so basically a uh, object uh, if I want the string representation of it okay what do you mean by string representation of it in object I'm having some fields and I'm I have assigned some values to them and I want that I want to see the content of the object okay so to do so we can make use of two string method okay so to in two string method uh, you can override two string method and you can actually show the content of that particular 
uh, uh, that particular object and that we can actually able to print it so basically same uh, string representation of the method uh, object is being given by your two string method this particular method strictly returns string value okay so whenever you are overriding it it will be having a return type that is string the next method uh, is again very important that is a hash code method so what hash code method is doing hash code method the name itself says it relates to something called as hashing so if you know the concept of hashing hashing is uh, is nothing but it gives me something like key or a unique something okay so basically each and every object uh, which we are creating so your jvm java virtual machine is giving some integer value to it it's like uh, for every student we are giving roll number similar way for every object to identify a particular object to search a particular object it gives some integer value to it okay and that is nothing but your hash code now this hash code which has been there it is uh, being used in many classes like hash map then uh, we are having hash set many such uh, you know collection of uh, collection classes has made use of this hash code uh, method to search a particular object in the collection hierarchy okay so when once we will see what is collection you will come to know what is it so basically hash code which is being there uh, if i will override it okay so i have to make use of hash code method in a such a way that i can return some unique thing so that that unique uh, thing will represent the uniqueness of the object so let's say if i'm having this multiple student object and i want to identify each of them separately how i can do that i can provide some roll number to each and every student and that key can be represent each object individually right so that is the way you can actually use a hash uh, you can use hash code then we are having a very important method i think we have uh, used it before and that is equals equals method is being uh, extensively uh, there or used in many classes it is being already overridden in many classes like string okay so if let's say if i am creating my own class and in that i am having uh, multiple objects i want to check it out for equality of these objects so i can make use of equals method so basically it compares the content of the uh, object and it returns you true or false value based on that okay then uh, we are having get class method this get class method or uh, the name itself says that get the class okay so it returns me the object as well as the metadata about the class okay uh, we are going to use this get class method in the uh, one of the topic which is being uh, there and that is nothing but a uh, uh, sql or databases whenever we are dealing with a databases jdbc basically in jdbc we are going to uh, going to use this particular get class method so that is one uh, method finalize i think if you remember uh, we have already seen finalize method in the garbage collection topic okay so i don't have to actually explain you that but uh, just for a revision finalize uh, method is there it is get called whenever you are overriding it it is being called by your jvm automatically whenever garbage collection or collector is about to get invoke okay so what this finalize does it doing a job of resource deallocations okay so if you have some resources open then you can able to close it uh, okay in this particular finalized method and it is being automatically called by your jvm so you don't have to actually call it explicitly it is being implicitly called by your jvm and it releases all the resources which is binded before garbage collection is get called 
Then we are having another method that is clone. So clone name itself says that it's a copy of the object. So whenever you want to create a exact copy of the object, then you, you can make use of clone. This is another way to create an object. So then we are having wait, notify and notify all. So wait, notify, notify all are the methods which is being extensively used for intermediate communication, intercommunication between threads. Okay, now what is thread? We will be learning this in multi-threading chapter. So that and uh, in that there is one topic called as intercommunication uh, between threads. In that we are going to make use of wet, notify and notify all. Just to give an idea about the, this, let me explain you what is it. So basically, uh, just have an example. Uh, I'm having reservations to be done, railway reservation, okay? So there are multiple people who are trying to reserve the seats at a time, okay? So basically, uh, reservation, let's say I can consider uh, my birth as an object. That particular object which is being there, birth, okay? And there are many other objects are trying to access it. Okay, so what I will be doing uh, at a time, whoever object first approach the birth, I will allocate that object that particular birth. Okay, so right now the processing happening between these two particular objects. Okay, so rest of other objects, what are they, which are there, I will make them wait, wait because processing is happening. Okay, now it may possible that I can book the birth or I just inquire and I can go. Okay, so based on the situation, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, until my job is done, all other threads will wait or other objects are going to wait for the particular object to complete its processing. Once it is being done, they are going to be notified that my job is done, you can carry on okay so that is being done by your notify and notify all so if you just want to inform to one other another thread then you can make use of notify method if you want to inform to all other methods that my job is done then you can you make use of notify all okay so this is being actually used in the inter uh, thread communication and uh, we will see this in multi-threading chapter okay so we will see uh, implementation for each of this method individually through a program. Okay, so in next video, we are going to see two string method. So just understand two string method uh, for that. Just watch our next video. Thank you.